Hello, John Zimmerman with Tablet Class Math. And what I want to do in this video is talk about the SAT and ACT um, and some important math tips that you definitely want to know if you're going to be taking this test. So um, just a little bit about my background. As most of you may or may not know, um, I taught middle school math, high school math, college math uh, for many, many years. And along those way, along that, that uh, period of time, I also uh, did a lot of tutoring, extensive tutoring, um, for private clients in SAT, ACT, uh, math prep. So I really, um, you know, learned the test, learned strategies, and, and actually seen the test evolve. Years ago, the SAT was a different type of test, and it's been modified. Um, I'm more familiar with the SAT than I am the ACT, but these tests change. But one thing that doesn't change is some of the basic uh, strategies and tips that all students need to know. All right, so let me go ahead and um, talk about one tip and use this, uh, use this problem to kind of set the stage. So, so here I have a problem, right? So let's just take a look at this. This is a very uh, typical type of problem you'll see on these tests. So I have if 2x squared minus 5x minus 9 equals 0, then x could be which of the following? So for those of you who are out there that... Um, um, are preparing for this, you should pause the video and see how would, just think about how, how would you approach this problem, okay? All right, so there's a couple different options, right? So you could say, well, um, first of all, you're looking at this and you're saying this may be or looks like a quadratic equation. So you'd be right. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, quadratic equation, and what am I going to do with the quadratic equation? I have to solve it. So what could you do? You could factor it. You could try to, um, if that doesn't work, you can try to solve by completing the square, which is definitely not a way you would want to go, or the quadratic formula, which would be a better way to go, right? So right off the top of your head, you'd say, well, I have to solve this equation so I can find my answers. So in other words, I have to take this equation, solve it to identify, ID, the solutions. Now, that's a natural uh, inclination towards even even myself, right? You look at the you look at this as a problem. Hey, you have to solve to identify the solutions, and then for those solutions, you go choose your answers. That's one approach, okay? And if you could do this, if you could solve that uh, quadratic equation quickly, that would, would would be a pretty good approach. And this is the thing about the SAT. Sometimes um, what seems to be a good approach may or may not be the best approach because everything is about time. Okay, how fast can you get to this problem correctly? So, a better approach, okay, when you see problems like this, and this is common, okay, very, very common, when they're asking you, hey, which one of these um, uh, solutions is the answer, or which one of these could be the solutions, the, one of the things that you want to do and recognize is say, oh, okay, I want to plug in my possible answers into the equation and see which one works. Okay, see which one which one of these works. So in other words, it's like plug and check, plug and check. And you could uh, not even know how to do a quadratic equation, totally forget how to do that. As long as you know how to plug in and use your calculator, you could you can answer this question uh, correctly. So this is really, really important. Remember, on the SAT and ACT, if I'm not mistaken, as well, that you get... Uh, Here's basically the way it works as far as um, your questions go, right? So if you answer this question, you'll get, like, let's say a point, okay? If you don't answer it, you'll get no credit. But if you answer it incorrectly, I believe it's like a minus 0.25. You get points taken off if you answer incorrectly. So you only want to guess when you have a good, solid, educated guess, okay? If you don't know it, you know, if you don't know it, you definitely want to skip and move on. So... But time is of the essence. Okay, that's the whole thing here. So on SAT, they allow you to have a graphing calculator, unless that's changed. Okay, so with these calculators, you can actually do some pretty cool stuff here to find out which one of these is the answer rather quickly. Okay, so here's our solutions, our possible solutions to this. So instead of just taking the route of going, okay, I'm going to just plug this in and check, plug this in and check. Plug this one in, check. Plug this one in, check. Plug this one in. That's one, two, three, four. But one, two, three, four, five different possibilities. That's a lot of work, right? So we're all about trying to eliminate the amount of work we have to do 
for the SAT. It's different than a regular math test, mind you, okay? If I'm a math teacher, I'd be more interested in your ability to understand quadratic equations, the solutions, the graph, etc. But this is a different. All right, so let me show you what I would do, okay, the strategy I would take. So you have a graphing calculator. I would graph this equation. So you need to know how to use your calculator. Like my favorite calculator to use is the TI-83. Okay, TI-83, very, very common in education. It's been around for quite some time, but it's an awesome calculator. And there's other versions, more advanced versions than the TI-83, but really, you know, you're, most students won't even max out all the capabilities of the TI-83. But on this uh, graphing calculator, or if you have another one, you should be able to graph this uh, function. Okay, you should be able to graph uh, 2x squared minus 5x minus 9 and take a look at the graph on your calculator. So when you do that, you get this basic graph and you can kind of move your cursor around to identify the locations where the graph is crossing the x-axis. Now this is, this is really important. Um, when we talk about the SAT and ACT, you do have to understand, like say for example, we're talking about quadratic equations, you have to have an understanding of quadratic equations and their solutions, etc. So there's no escaping that. You have to master the material first. Then you have to talk about test taking strategies. Okay. So for those of you, let me just kind of scroll up here. I'm going to know I'm kind of going back and forth. For those, those of you that understand quadratic equations, we know that we can have different types of quadratic equation um, solutions. We can have real number solutions, which represent points where the graph, and the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola, where uh, the graph crosses the x axis. Now, if you look here at our options, all of our options here are real numbers. Okay? So, basically, I know I'm going to have some sort of graph that's going to be crossing through the x axis. Okay? So, automatically, you know, this problem is giving me a lot of clues if I already understand in, uh, quadratic equations. So, I come down here, I get my handy dandy graphing calculator out, and I'm saying, okay, I need to eliminate some of these. Uh, solutions that I need to check. So I graph it and of course uh, when you do look at the graph you can see on your graphing calculator that it kind of looks pretty close. It's difficult to find the exact points of intersection but they're pretty close to negative 1.1 and negative 3.7. So you're like oh okay great I got basically two points uh, let me go back and check my answers. So when I go back up here I see two choices right. I see this one negative 1.12, which is pretty close, and I see uh, 3.71. And believe me, the people that make these test questions know, hey, that you're going to be doing this. So not, they're not going to um, let you off that easy. They're just not going to have one obvious thing for you to check. They're going to give you two. Why? Because they want you to move fast. They want you to really you know, work these uh, questions intelligently. So you say, okay, I have two possible good answers. Now they're only asking for one. You can't you can't select B and E as an answer, right? So you have to we have to choose which one of these solutions, B or E, is the best one, the most accurate. Okay? So if you know if you look at our equation, 2x squared minus 5x minus 0, I have to plug in those numbers, okay, our possible answers in here for x, and see which one will get us closest to the value of zero. So let me go ahead and show you that work real quick. So when I do that, I plug in 3.71. That's one of our solutions, right? And we identify that as being pretty close to something on the graph that would work. And I get negative uh, 0 0.02. So that's really good. That's pretty close to zero. So our other option, which was around negative 1.1, our uh, solution was negative 1.12, our possible solution, as an answer choice. So I plug that in. And I do the, uh, the work and I get negative uh, 0.89. So which one is closer to zero? This one is. Okay, so this is the correct choice, 3.71. So, you know, if you do this by hand and you don't know how to use your calculator, like I just type this all into my calculator real quick. Two parentheses, 3.71 and parentheses squared. In other words, I just typed all this in and hit the enter button to do this. So I'm not kind of doing this piecemeal. You know, um, you know, I'm just using my calculator, you know, to the max, very effectively. So a couple takeaway things here for the SAT. Okay, 
Well, let me just go back up here real quick. So this would be our solution. Now, for those of you who, you know, understood this nature of this question, oh, it's an, it's an equation. Here's the possible answers. I understand it's a quadratic equation. None of these here look like simple basic solutions, uh, right? It's not like x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 5. So I know I'm going to have some sort of um, uh, solution that's going to be, that I'm going to have to use the quadratic equation for, or something along those lines. You have to stop and think, and that's why the SAT and ACT, you know, it takes preparation. So let me just wrap this up real quick. This is one problem, but the concepts, overall concepts and strategies are the same, okay? All right, SAT, ACT, when you're thinking about it, how do you want to prepare? Well, step one is you got to know, you got to understand the material, all right? So you have to master the material. So if you don't understand how to work with powers or how to work with systems or equations or some geometry, if you're shaky on that, you have to go back and review. I would uh, certainly suggest those of you out there that are listening or parents, have your children or have your teenagers master the material. Go back and review weak areas and just get their basic core skills very, very strong. The second thing is you need to master your calculator. Master. Yeah. I need to master spelling. Okay. <laughs> master your calculator. Okay. Your calculator is extremely powerful. You got to work with it effectively. Okay. Very, very, you have to be very confident with all its functions and you really got to use it because that's going to be a big part of your ability to get to these questions quickly. Okay. The third thing is you need to identify a lot of the common uh, questions on on SAT and ACT, okay, and your your tactics, okay, or your how you're going to respond to them. So this only comes uh, this only comes through practice. So when you're taking a lot of these um, uh, SAT ACT practice tests, you have to you have to learn and read up on the different strategies. This is what it's basically plugging in and check. So that's one common strategy. But if you didn't know that, you might be floundering, and you you, you know every time you see this question, you might just do it the wrong way. You might get it correct, but it's going to take you, you know, three times as long to do it. Okay, so you have to identify what type of question, what's the best strategy, and now not not all of the questions are going to um, um, be so obvious. But those of but those questions that you recognize right off the bat, you can recognize. Oh, this is a, this type of question. I can apply this type of strategy. Boom. That's going to save you time. That's going to lock in a solid you know point in the plus column, and that's extremely important. Fourth thing um, that you want to be thinking about is practicing. Practice, practice, practice. You have to practice like a lot. So even let's say 10th graders, right? So you're taking the PSAT. Well, I've heard this time and time again. I'm only in 10th grade. I only have to take the PSAT. Then I see where I, you know, I'll see where I stand and then I'll start studying. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's the wrong approach. Okay. I would say to really do exceptional and there's a there is exceptions to exceptions, okay? There's those people that just ace the SAT, and that's awesome. But most students, okay, good students, strong in math, strong in reading, are going to require practice. I would recommend at least like a one year um, taking practice test, building yourself up. So that would be like the 10th grade, okay? So for most of you out there in the 10th grade, this is the time. Because 11th grade, that's it. It's, you know, it's kind of game on. You're going to be getting your your uh, SAT, ACT scores and submitting those to colleges for your college entrance. So it's a big deal. And I would start early in your 10th grade, probably the summer after your freshman year is not a, not a bad time to start like say reviewing algebra if you're going to be taking geometry. So practice, practice, practice. And then uh, the fifth thing here is also really watch your time management, okay? Your time management on your test. So time management strategies as well. Like if I don't know this question, skip it, move on. You know, what do I do with my time? But these are just some basic things that come to mind. Um, you know, there is, it's a lot, but if you, you don't have to go spend $2,000 for Princeton, you know, review class. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of parents will put their, their kids in it. And those are good, good uh, reviews. Oftentimes they're going to just basically tell you what I'm telling you here. Okay in a you know five day class that's gonna cost you two thousand dollars. So give yourself time, all right? Give yourself time to prepare for this test. Respect 
the test as being a challenging test, but it, the payoff is huge. If you get great um, SAT, ACT scores, that's really going to move up your um, competitiveness to get into the college of your choice and or scholarships, etc. Anyways, hopefully, you know, you gain a lot from this, uh, from, uh, you know, some good amount of tips from this video. You know, that was the whole idea behind it. You know, um, you know, you can probably hear the passion in my voice. And uh, I really stress to you out there that are preparing, you know, follow what I'm doing. I've been doing this for many, 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 many years, and I've had some pretty exciting results. I've been able to take some students that were really, you know, you know, like let's say at the 450 level to SAT and get them up into the uh, low 700s. Okay, it was only because you know I was, you know, I had the time to work with them and I built up their their skill sets and I built up their, you know, um, test taking um, uh, skills as well. So anyways, listen, if you're looking for a place to review and learn um, middle and high school mathematics, please drop by tabletclass.com. We offer a free trial. And um, if you like this video, uh, you can also subscribe to me on YouTube. But other than that, uh, thanks for spending some time with me and have a great day.